This is the beginning of my experiments with this new solar heater, which contains this row of mirrors on the surface of this earthen berm. This mirror berm is many times cheaper than these concave mirrors for large solar power plants. Investors have already built more than a hundred of these power plants with a total cost of about 40 billion dollars. A similar mirror focuses solar radiation into such a receiver, where solar energy is converted into thermal energy with a temperature of almost 400 degrees Celsius, which is converted into steam to produce electricity. In addition, some of that thermal energy comes into similar heat storages to generate steam and electricity at night. It is obvious that if this mirror berm reduces the cost of those power plants by several times, the cost of our solar electricity will drastically decrease, and therefore we will win the competition against thermal and nuclear power plants. We can notice the following two major innovations of this solar heater. First, it uses such mirrors which are made of cheap and long-lasting concrete. The second innovation is this cheap berm, which is made from the surrounding soil, and now I will try to prove to you the expediency of these two innovations. We usually think that the main parts of such solar heaters are this mirror and this receiver, but here we see that they form only about 40% of the cost of a solar heater. At the same time, this half of the cost is formed by various devices and structures between the mirrors and the ground, but we get rid of this half of the cost if we replace them with our cheap earthen berm. It is interesting that the heavy weight of our concrete mirrors turns into an advantage, because our heavy mirrors cannot be moved by a hurricane. Now I remind you that traditional solar heaters must constantly turn according to the movement of the sun across the sky. We replace this movement of the mirrors by this movement of the receiver, and we can notice that the system is many times cheaper than those devices for rotating large and heavy mirrors. Our mirrors and receivers should be located along this west-east line, while the rows of traditional solar heaters are usually perpendicular to this west-east line. I have to clarify that this earthen berm was built for 50 degrees north latitude, where my experiments are taking place. If it were located in the tropics, the berm would have to be something like this, lower and cheaper. The location near the equator allows us to abandon any earthen berm, and we can put our heavy concrete mirrors on the ground. The total construction cost of the solar heaters for these European and American power plants was approximately 300 or 400 dollars per square meter. However, these new Chinese power plants use cheaper solar heaters with a total construction cost of about $200 per square meter. The cost of the materials of this concrete mirror is about 100 times less, about $1.5 per square meter, and this is the cost of its materials. Of course, we understand that we must add other costs for the manufacture and installation of our mirrors and the costs regarding this earthen berm and this receiver. But still, the total construction cost of our solar heater can be many times cheaper than traditional ones, especially if someone makes a machine that will build an earthen berm and put concrete mirrors on it. Let's look at how I made my mirrors with my own hands, although we understand that we should have an automated production of our concrete mirrors, similar to factories for the production of such well-known concrete products. The making of my mirror began with this reflective film, which was temporarily fixed with moisture on a curved surface. Then I put the first layer of concrete, which is composed of sand with a large proportion of cement. After a short wait, about one hour, I put the second layer of concrete from sand and gravel. The second concrete layer must be reinforced, and I did the reinforcement not with similar steel rods, but with this polymer fiber. Let's look at how my concrete mirrors focus the sun's rays on this white screen, and this is a spot of solar radiation from my mirrors. 
We can notice that the height of this part is about 10 times less than the height of the mirrors, but we have seen that I made my mirrors badly. And maybe someone will make them better, so that this part is several tens of times smaller. Now I will show you two of my mirrors, which were made by my hands. We see that the cement fixed my reflective film poorly, and for example here the film has already left the concrete surface. After a few days or weeks, the film will leave almost the entire surface of the concrete, and maybe someone will someday offer a solution to the problem of good adhesion of polymer films to cement. Now I will show you the other two mirrors, and we see that the film is fixed on the concrete surface much better. This film was fixed by me with this cheap glue, and later I will show you how I did it. Nevertheless, we can see some disadvantages of my mirrors, and maybe someone will eliminate them. In addition, today I cannot guarantee that my cheap glue will hold the film for a long time, because the measurement of its lifespan is just beginning, and I will report the results of this test in my future videos. Nevertheless, a few months ago I used that cheap glue to fix this piece of film to concrete, and then it was tested outdoors, under snow, frost and rain. And now, after three months, that glue continues to hold the film. Moreover, we can notice that the glue holds the film quite securely. Let's look at how I installed the reflective film on my mirrors, and first I washed the concrete surface, removing grains of sand. Then I coat the concrete with a layer of that glue, and we see that my glue is heavily diluted with water. After that I wait a few minutes for the glue to harden a little, and then I wet the surface and remove excess glue. Then I put a reflective film, and its aluminum layer should be on the outside, and therefore its polymer layer is in contact with the glue and concrete. Unfortunately, the lifespan of the cheap reflective film will be short, one or two years, and therefore we must periodically glue a new film on our concrete mirrors. Maybe someone will someday make a robot that moves along a row of concrete mirrors and installs a roll of new reflective film with glue. In addition, we know about durable reflective films with a lifespan of several tens of years, or maybe someone will suggest a cheap way to periodically coat our concrete with some kind of reflective substance. I have already said that advantages of concrete mirrors are their low cost and high weight. In addition, concrete mirrors have a long lifespan, and they keep their surface shape well for focusing solar radiation, but our idea also has disadvantages. For example, one square meter of our mirror will typically produce less thermal energy than a square meter of such a traditional solar heater, and our heating temperature can be less too. I plan to explore the heat production of our mirrors and their various disadvantages, and the results of my research will be described in my future videos. For example, now my biggest fears are caused by changes in the shape of the ocean berm and the influence of some insects or plants, and I plan to check the influence of snow and other possible disadvantages.